I'm here with Mike Mendes, the director of uh, Big Ass Spider. Uh, how are you doing today? I am doing wonderfully. I'm a little hungover, but other than that, I'm doing swell. Uh, this is your third time at the Montreal Fantasia Film Festival. Can you describe the city and what makes Fantasia such a special film festival? Can I describe the city? I, I don't know if I can. Uh, yes, this is my third time. I, I came here for the first time in 2000. I'm, you can't see this, but I'm wearing my f first Fantasia shirt I ever got. Is, it, is that from like 1997? Something like that. I think, I think 2000, I believe, if I remember correctly. Uh, yeah, but it's definitely, uh, it's definitely, you know, makes me feel old. Uh, no, <laughs> no, it's definitely a, a, a vintage, um, and, and, you know, I earned that vintage. Uh, so, but no, what makes Fantasia special? as the fans you know i mean a i mean not to discredit the amazing programmers that are here mitch davis is awesome and you know they've had many awesome programmers throughout the the years and uh it's just it's a wonderful team and it's such a well-oiled machine by this part and it's been wonderful to watch it grow because i think the first time i was here uh they were only on like year four or something like it was a fourth or fifth year or something they had done it and so now uh, on year 17 to see them still going see them stronger than ever seeing more supported uh it's wonderful and and but you know so so that part is wonderful but again back to the fans uh the fans are what make it special i as i, I told everyone last night I, I truly honestly believe they are the best audience in the world and um the you know i i kind of rate all screenings by my screenings at Fantasia. You know, that that's kind of like, you know, the, honestly, the best screening I think I ever had was for I filmed the convent uh, ever uh, for any 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 of my movies uh, w was here. And it's just, you know, it's just such a special memory that, you know, it's, you're always trying to recapture that or relive it or live up to it. Uh, and, uh, you know, they never let me down. It's always a fantastic uh, experience. Can you tell us the story of Big Ass Spider for those who want to see it or are interested in seeing it? Sure. Big Ass Spider is the story of a government experiment gone wrong where a uh, spider gets loose uh, that is growing exponentially by the hour by eating people. Uh, and uh, the government's trying to stop it, uh, but a hapless uh, but lovable exterminator and a um, unlikely security guard are the ones... Uh, determined to stop it because he the exterminator wants to impress a girl uh and uh it becomes a race to stop the spider between the government and the exterminators um you know uh, the exterminator has to stop the spider before the government destroys the city uh how did you get attached to this project uh a producer named travis stevens uh who's uh kind of up and coming indie producer who's been doing a lot of cool stuff uh did a movie called uh, cheap thrills that uh, was also south by southwest this year and also uh a documentary on Alejandro Yadorowski's Dune, um, you know, uh, approached me about it. He had been working with uh, Epic Pictures, and they had approached him. Uh, and uh, Travis just had a lot of uh, good, um, you know, relationships with filmmakers. And uh, he thought, you know, well, he, he's like, you know, Mike kind of gets comedy and horror. Uh, he might be a good fit for that. So uh, I went in and pleaded my case of why I'd be a, a good fit, and, and thankfully you know, it was a good fit for both of us because I didn't want to initially do it because I thought it was going to be some terrible, you know, sci-fi type movie. Uh, and, um, and it is. No. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, so, uh, but no, the producers really wanted to do something kind of different and allowed me to do something kind of, um, you know, they, they, they were very open minded as to going like, you know, let's try to make this funny. Let's try to make this something different than everything else. And they were wonderful and supportive, and that makes all the difference. And so it was a good fit for everybody. It was a good fit for them. It was a good fit for me, and it just sort of snowballed from there. Uh, what's like to direct uh, Lloyd Kaufman on this picture? Oh, he's unruly and drunk. And no, no, Lloyd's wonderful. Lloyd's a, a joy. Um, no, it's great. I, I first worked with him in a movie called Hatchet Two, uh, where we both were extras and played hunters uh, for Adam Green. And um, he always told me that, uh, you know, if I ever had a movie that he would fly himself out and put himself up and, uh, you know, and do it. And true to his word, we basically paid him with a cheeseburger. Uh, but he came out and did it, and it was wonderful. And I really love Lloyd. I think he's really a great guy. Uh, after Fantasia, will you be will Big Aspires be a part of any other festivals coming up? Or is there a DVD or Blu-ray plan later this year or next year? Uh, sure. Um, we've been on a, a festival uh, circuit starting with South by Southwest, and we've done now about uh, 12 or 13 of them all over the world, from Brazil, Brazil to Amsterdam. So we still we're on the wind down of that world tour, uh, but we have um, Sitges coming up, which is Spain. Um, we have Korea uh, at uh, PFAN, uh, which is actually this week. Uh, we have um, a Monster Fest in Australia. Uh, in Germany, there's going to be um, there's a touring. Uh, festival called like the Week of Terror 
where um, you know it, it's a touring festival like that hits Hamburg, Munich, um, you know, um, all, all, basically all the major German cities, uh, Frankfurt, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then uh, and then October, we're gearing up towards the release October eighteenth, which uh, I, I, I'm not sure if that's what it, where it's going to be in Canada. I, I think it's going to be very close to that, but certainly October eighteenth in the U.S. is what kicks off all the other releases around the world, uh, and it's going to be um, in select theaters, and it's going to be on VOD. Uh, and then, um, and then from that point, uh, it'll come out on Blu-ray probably in January and then, uh, and then TV right, would be my guess. Uh, last question. Uh, what does the future hold for you and, uh, projects you would like to like work on as your a dream project for say? Well, my dream project would be like Friday the 13th. I would love that. I grew up with, with that type of stuff. I mean, lots of, uh, dream projects, the Haunted Mansion. I'd love to do a Scooby-Doo movie. The thing is like all, all these movies, like, like for at a time, like, uh, you know, they were all done, and I was like, ah, that was a dream movie. I would have loved to have done that. But but now, you know, time goes on, and, and you know, now it's, you know, you could be okay with a new Scooby-Doo movie or okay with a new Hunter Matcher movie. So so there's there's still hope uh, out there. But, yeah, uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to develop my own things and just trying to find whatever – uh, whatever person's crazy enough to hire me, and uh, and uh, you know, and, the, and hopefully for a project that I'm excited about, and then uh, and then a spaceship landed during the interview. I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't know. It was an airplane. It was an airplane. Yeah. No, I think it's like a rolling cart. It just no, it's loud. An airplane, like, Is it? No, because airplanes they always cause that. There we go. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Sorry, my airplane just came by. Anyway, so yeah, I mean, uh, I'd love to get behind the camera as soon as possible, but I'm I'm a picky bastard, uh, and, and I, I want to find something that's really special. So, well, Mike, thanks for your time. Thank you. Best of luck in your future. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me.